Welcome to Stanapa's video series, where we open our doors and share what we do. Several shading and temperature studies have been done over the years on Ceylandia. And what we have found is that the temperature of the sand in the nest can be as high as 32 degrees Celsius. This causes stress to the embryo that's developing. And more often than not, this kills the entire nest. Sometimes you can even find partially boiled eggs when you're excavating the nest. So thanks to the shading study, we now know that you can use something as simple as dried palm leaves or dried sargassum, which also lets the rain through. And that's a natural phenomenon that can help to cool the nest. Data loggers are what we use to measure the temperature of the sand at different levels inside the nest and also at control locations. The data logger study is something that we will restart, hopefully in the near future. All these studies are made possible with the help of Dr. Nicole Estevan, a former director of STANAPA, who has, since her departure from Stacia, always helped the sea turtle program with advice, material, helping to publish some papers using our fieldwork data. And we would just like to thank her for this. The sea turtle program has been doing in-water surveys since 2008. Initially, we wanted to do it every three or four years, but the recommendations from the last one in 2019 was that we should better try and do it every year to get a better view of what's going on with the turtles in the water. Turtle surveys consist of two divers in the water, 10 meters apart, and they swim along a straight transect as straight as possible for 40 minutes, observing all turtles that they see. They record where they see the turtle. So if it was over sand or a wreck or the reef or seagrass, they record what size the turtle was, what sex it is, whether male or female, and what the turtle's behavior was, if there's any injuries or damage on the carapace that they can see. And all this is analyzed and put in a report. For last year's survey, 12 turtles were observed, mostly female, five females, four males, and we were unsure of one and two swam away without being identified by species. Most of them were outside of the reserve, and this is logical because most that were sighted were greens, and greens feed on seagrass, and there's more seagrass outside of the reserves. Most were seen on the Caribbean side, and that's sort of strange because there's more traffic on this side with the tugboats and the cargo ships and the tankers. So you would think they would prefer the quiet Atlantic side, but no. But on the other hand, on the Caribbean side, the sea is calmer if you're looking at those sorts of conditions. And also we did more surveys, as you can see from the image on the Caribbean side. So that might have something to do with it. In future, we are going to drop the amount of surveys we do because as you can see, some overlapped in the end and try to make it equal as much on the Atlantic side as on the Caribbean side. Another recommendation that we found was that instead of maybe doing 40 dives in one survey or in one survey season, that we should do two shorter surveys, one on the beginning of the year and one on the end of the year to look and see if there's a seasonal difference. Due to the cost involved in satellite tracking work, we are not able as a program to do this sort of work too often. Whenever it's done, it's in collaboration with a university or researchers that can fund the work and the satellite time. The first time was in 2007. We tracked two turtles. The most popular one was called Miss Shelley, and the other was called Track. I can concentrate on Track because Track was a little more interesting as she went all the way to La Romana in Santo Domingo and hung around there for a while. So it seems like she forages off the coast of Santo Domingo, which is a little disconcerting because they take turtles as catch there. 
She has been back to Stacia a total of five or six times. It seems she comes every two to three years, which is good for us because we can measure her growth and check her health every time we see her on the beach. The second satellite tracking event was in 2016 when we tracked two turtles and they did basically the same thing, hung around Stacia for a while and then headed north to their foraging grounds. We hope to be able to find a partner to continue this work in the future. These are just some of the things that we do in the turtle program and we are very happy to have share them with you. If you have any questions or comments or maybe suggestions for us, you can contact us at the email below as well as the phone number of the office is listed. We're very, very happy to answer any queries you have. And of course, we're always, always happy to talk about sea turtles. And just a reminder, volunteers and donations are always welcome.